record last night. So this is a beautiful after the rain moment through the screen. What I can see with my naked eye is so beautiful, but when I try to zoom in on it, of course you've got the screen in the way and these phones are so sensitive that they pick that up. But this bird sitting under the tree is beautiful. And there he goes. Here comes another one. All the baby ducks are born and they seem to be surviving fairly well. So it's a happy morning for the birdies out here. These little ducks are I guess you would say teenagers now. They were born this season. Most of them will end up disappearing. Maybe they fly off to other ponds. When they're young, they stay together. So I'm just sitting here. Let me step into the shade and looking at things, watching how the light strikes the plants that are on my porch. My parsley, my oregano my basil. Just relaxing out here. But it's time to go in the house now. Stepping back into the light. Time to go in and stretch my canvas for a big wave painting I'm going to do very similar to the little tiny 5 by 8 inch gouache that I did. And we'll see how that comes. I haven't decided if I'm going to use acrylic or oil yet. Maybe both. I'm going to take this painting that I have and I'm going to borrow it. <laughs> I'm going to take the roll I have of canvas. I'm going to stretch it onto this panel or onto this stretcher board that is holding this painting I'm going to staple the canvas over this painting. Then I'm going to paint a wave painting. And when it dries, peel it off the canvas, roll it up, and ship it. Because it's cheaper to ship that way. And it saves an awful lot of money. This is actually a painting I did of, once again, part of my backyard over by the pool where the big bridge is leading from one side of the pond to the other. Anyway, I will take a few snapshots of the process. So I stretched my canvas on top of my previous painting. You see it has to be probably dampen from the back to tighten it up just a little bit but it doesn't really matter because it's coming right back off this stretcher frame when it's done. Hey let me show you how I make my ferments fermented vegetables and sauerkraut before we start painting then we'll get back to the painting. So what I have here is a head of cabbage and a jalapeno, one carrot, and a half an onion, a couple of teaspoons of mustard seed. I've got about maybe 15 whole peppercorns and two tablespoons of salt. And it's getting all mashed down. The cabbage will release its moisture and eventually we will have some juice in here. Let's see. Yep, some is starting already. So I'll have to keep mixing it up, turning it, crushing it. It smells good already. And then I'm going to put it into this jar here and let it ferment. I'll let you see what it looks like after all the juice accumulates. And I get it in the jar. I have one ferment in the fridge right now with my peppers on it. 
And then over here, I have three that are still developing. They have about another week to go with all mixed vegetables, but they smell so good. Here they are after they have fermented for two weeks and they are just delicious. The sauerkraut still has maybe two more weeks to go, maybe three, because that's going to take a little longer. So you might not mind just taking your peppers and onions, your fermented foods, and putting them on the side of your plate beside your eggs or chopping them up small and sprinkle them on top of your eggs. They could go on your salsa. They could go anywhere. Here's a little chickpea recipe, which has onion and radishes and all the things that are in that ferment, peppers, carrots, but then I chopped some fresh ones in here as well. Add it all together with a little bit of the ferment juice and some olive oil, salt, pepper. You can use oregano, parsley, or even cilantro if you like. And here's your delicious, could be a side dish, but for me, since I don't eat meat, this is a main dish. Very nutritious and delicious. Okay, we'll talk a little more about painting and then we'll get the painting started. So, I wanna paint something that would be realistic for my area. But here's my problem. I have too many options. And you'll see that I change this wave many times because I keep thinking maybe I should make it smaller, maybe I should make it bigger, maybe I should move it to the left or to the right. Sometimes when you don't have an exact person to have to paint the portrait for or an exact chair you're painting or an exact structure that's just sitting in front of you that you've set up with the lights on it, you've got too many options. But anyway... I have a lot of fun with this wave because I get to just play with it, put the colors in that I like. And yes, I changed it several times, including even at the end of the video, I still changed it again. So there's no guarantee this wave ended up exactly like it did in this video, but I'm just trying to show you how you can make a wave that you can choose many different colors and have a lot of fun with it. So that's the point that I'm trying to show you today. I hope you enjoy. I'm mixing anthraquinine blue with some phthalo green. Also just a tiny little bit of burnt umber. Here and there I'm using the smallest little bit of zinc white I try to wait till the very end to put any white white in there and mostly use transparent colors as much as possible because I really want the sea to look deep and mysterious. I'm copying a little gouache painting that I made and I thought I'd move that wave over just a little bit. Mm. I'm not sure if I moved it over too much or not. I'll have to see. I still have to develop the small wave behind the big wave and we'll see how they interact together. My favorite color, teal, just plain teal. And I mix it with a little bit of cadmium yellow light. I've tried to make this color with phthalo green, anthraquinine blue, and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. I never quite get the same color though. It's a beautiful color.
down on the bottom I'll be using a little bit of Payne's Gray up on the top in the sky I'm going to use a little bit of lavender these colors really aren't important except to know that I am putting different shades in this dark water because I want it to have different hues even though it's dark but you can choose any colors of the sea that make you happy I'm not putting all the detail in this because I have not decided if I want to leave the wave right where it is but I do put a little dark underneath the white water on the wave now I put the sky in by just dabbing my zinc white all over the sky and my lavender. All of the paints on this canvas are still wet, so with just a little spray of water, they blend just the way I want them to, because I want that sky back there all misty. I want some of the water line coming up into the sky. You'll see I'll work on that just a little bit. I just want it to look kind of far away and misty. I don't like open acrylics. Once they dry, I want them to stay dry, but I keep them wet with a little bit of spray from my atomizer. See here, I'm bringing some of the blue up into the sky purposely, softening that water line. I'm also trying to get a little bit of paint around the edges of the canvas, because this is going to come off of this canvas, off of this stretcher board and I want to make sure there's enough painting to wrap around another stretcher if that's what the person who gets it does. They may actually mount it another way, but I want to give them plenty of painting to make that choice. I'm using a hake or hecky brush to smooth this out a little bit. And I add a little bit of yellow in there to show that there is some sun back there, which is what's causing the wave to get some sun or some yellow lights translucently shining through it. So, a good start. colors. Might want to move that wave over just a tiny bit. We'll see. I don't want it in the middle. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's a little closer to the middle than I like, but we'll see. I did move this wave over a little bit. Now it's just a matter of taste and color choices. I need that light luminescent color inside the wave. That little bit of shadow that comes from the wave cresting over. I don't think that wave can be that big unless there's some wave activity behind it, so I have to put some of that in. And I play, play, play with the colors. This was a very fun painting to paint. So here you go. I'm going to call that finished for now. Just all the fun colors in here, making a wave any way you want to make it. There's a few splashes in there. And I think 
thoroughly enjoyed myself and that was the point. Sometimes you have to do a very serious painting and everything has to come out just perfect. But this time it just comes the way I want it. And that's what I love about art. Thanks for joining me everyone. And remember, you can paint too.